We're just arriving at our very first Australian RV park. You have reached your destination on your right. We've reserved a campsite at Tropic Breeze Caravan Park in beautiful Port Douglas, Queensland. We've chosen this as our starting point because it's a gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. And even though we've arrived during the rainy season, we've looked into a dry day. This is my very first time backing up a vehicle with the driver's seat on the right-hand side. But even so, I made it on the first shot. Renting a camper van that's half the size of our motorhome probably didn't hurt. Time to hook up for the very first time at our first holiday park in Australia. And this is all we need. First we made sure the power was off on the circuit breaker, same as in the States. Plug that in. Hooked up, all done. Because RVs are a little different here, full hookups are almost non-existent. We'll explain more about that in an upcoming video. But because of this, and the smaller tank capacity of most camper vans, caravan parks in Australia typically feature something called a camp kitchen. They generally have a refrigerator, toaster, tea kettle, stove, sink, and other cooking amenities, allowing people to prepare meals and do the dishes without using any water on their camper or filling their gray tank. It's also a great place to meet other people. This modest camp kitchen is actually just a temporary space while Tropic Breeze is undergoing renovations. They're turning this great indoor-outdoor space into a brand new modern camp kitchen. To further reduce water usage on board, just about every campground is equipped with bathrooms and showers, as well as laundry facilities. Like many caravan parks in warm climates, Tropic Breeze has a beautiful swimming pool too. And being right on the coast, their back gate provides easy access to the ocean. This way, this way to the beach. Even though it's evening and a bit overcast, it's beautiful out here. We chose Tropic Breeze because they're so convenient to downtown Port Douglas. And more importantly, walking distance to the harbor where we'll be departing for our snorkel trip to the Great Barrier Reef. We chose our boat carefully because the outer reef is an hour and a half offshore and some boats are too small to comfortably handle any rough water. Other tour boats are so enormous that intimate exploration of the reef would be overwhelmed by the large number of snorkelers on board. Plus their size can prevent them from accessing certain locations. We selected a brand new boat that was purpose-built for snorkeling the very best parts of the outer reef. Large enough to handle the trip and small enough to provide a more personalized snorkeling experience. Wavelength 4. Wavelength only hosts about 40 snorkelers at a time provides easy access to the water, and comfortable indoor and outdoor spaces. It just launched in 2015, so everything is brand new. The crew provides masks, snorkels, fins, and full body stinger suits, just in case of an unlikely encounter with a jellyfish. The suits also protect us from sunburn, and protect the reef from sunblock, since they make it unnecessary. While the captain motored wavelength out of the harbor, we all listened to the requisite safety briefing. We're on our way to the outer reef. During the trip, one of wavelength's onboard marine biologists briefed us about what we'd be seeing and how to get the most out of our time in the water. When we arrived, the crew lowered the swim platform to make exit and entry easy. Here's our entire group about to hit the water, eager for their first glimpse of the Great Barrier Reef. And off we go. We were immediately stunned by the volume and variety of coral. It just went on and on, in every direction.
Trying to capture the experience on video was a little frustrating because you can't tell from the footage just how overwhelming it all is. As amazing as it was, we can only imagine how intense it would have been had the weather been better. A fair amount of our time in the water was under pouring rain. But it didn't matter. We've snorkeled in Hawaii, Mexico, the Caribbean, and the Florida Keys. And all together, they don't add up to a fraction of the beauty and vastness of the Great Barrier Reef. We think we've been ruined and may never be able to snorkel anywhere else without feeling let down. We even shared the water with three different sharks, which we had been assured were harmless. That seems to be the case since they were obviously disinterested in us. But we are glad they were only reef sharks and not great whites. Even though those are supposedly no danger either, we didn't really want to find out. The Great Barrier Reef was a spectacular experience that even exceeded our high expectations. On our walk back to Tropic Breeze that evening, we thought we'd come across some kind of giant fruit tree. Actually, what we discovered are giant fruit bats, better known as flying foxes. We had a great time in Port Douglas and would definitely go back again next time.